Hello, everybody. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the very first ever Super Heroines Convention. I am Whitney Reisner, and I am the board president for Super Heroines, etc. And my pronouns are she and her. For those of you who may not be familiar with who we are, Super Heroines is a 501c3 nonprofit that fights for representation and inclusion in geek culture. We serve a growing community of women via monthly member-driven events, such as our graphic novel book club and our women's GMing cohort. If you would like to know more about us, you can visit, visit us online at superheroinesetc.org, or you can see us after this panel. We also encourage you to engage with us on social media by using the hashtag SheCon2020. As we begin today, I invite you to join in acknowledging the land that we occupy that sustains us. Every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who've contributed their hopes, their dreams, and energy to making the history that has led us to this moment. Some were brought here against their will, some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hopes of a better life, and some have lived on this land for more generations than can be counted. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We begin this effort to uncover what has been buried by acknowledging that we are not the first stewards of this land that we call home, honoring previous tenders of this land and expressing gratitude for our access to this land. Because of the virtual environment of this con, we are coming from all over the United States and are representing the traditional lands of many people. I encourage you to go to native-land.ca to learn more about where you live and share in the comments below. We pay respects to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events. Acknowledgement is just the beginning. After this event, we encourage you to please learn more. During this panel, we do ask you to please mute your mics until the end of the presentation. During the event, you can ask questions in the chat and someone will be monitoring, to, monitoring them to make sure that they are answered. At the end, you can unmute and ask questions. Um, if you need closed captions, Google has that option. You just need to hover over the closed captions button and um, they'll pop that up. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to our presenter today, Robin. Hi everybody. Hello, some familiar faces and not so familiar faces. <laughs> Can everyone hear me okay from there? Great, we were just concerned about how it would sound since I can't be plugged into the mic since I'm a little bit further away so that you can see my whole body while we do this together. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Robin Warren. I started off as a public school physical educator, um, a gym teacher and a health teacher, and I taught mostly middle and high school aged kids. And during my time there, I realized that I wanted to be an example of health in a really different way. And I really got along with the kids who wanted to share their anime lists with me, what I should watch, and I would mix in geeky themes to really common group games like Steal the Bacon and make it like that they were all tributes instead and would welcome them to the whatever amount of games we had played of now Hunger Games um, and let the kids go at it uh, and do different things like that with them. And over time, I ended up meeting a lot of people, especially folks at a meetup group called Geek Girl Brunch, who said that if they had a PE teacher more like me, they might not have hated Jim so much, which is a huge compliment, and then would ask me, you know, but do you train adults? So 
That's sort of how I've gotten here in a very small nutshell. There are a few people who have heard this story before and have heard a much longer version of it, but uh, you can always like search the internet and it's the story is out there for the masses. Um, a little bit about Geek Girl Strong itself. It started off as just the health coaching business of me working one-on-one -on -one with people like they were asking, and those people kind of ran with it and turned it into a big old wellness community of nerds. And it's been super awesome. We have all sorts of things like this. Um, I don't know, the Discord server is pretty popping these days, and like everything else in between has been really great. So, Today, we are going to go over a few different exercises that can be mostly done seated. There will be a few where um, if you would like to participate, you'll have to stand up and sit back down and things like that. If you don't want to participate, that's totally okay. You can just take notes and keep everything that we've done uh, for yourself. Uh, I'll be in the cons Discord after this, and I will share a sign-up link to um, get this as a PDF. So if you miss anything in terms of taking notes, don't worry. You can always um, go over there and I'll send it to you if you sign up for the newsletter. If you're already signed up for the newsletter and you already have a PDF, it'll be slightly different. But um, either way, it's pictures of me demonstrating a lot of them, but it's everything listed out for you so that you kind of know what you're getting into by the end. Um, hmm. So what I normally ask when I do this workshop is like how many hours people think they spend sitting a day. And right now, I don't want to ask. <laughs> Not because like I'm going to be mad at anyone, but I don't know. It's kind of like a sensitive like, hey, how you doing question these days. Like, hey, how often are you in your house? How often are you sitting? Uh, feels very different than it used to. So instead of asking that, we're just going to go ahead with the idea that we're all spending more time inside than we have, for the most part, in a long time. Um, and a lot of that is going to be seated activities because we're in our homes. And especially if you're someone who lives in an apartment or you have neighbors that are close by in a city, you're not necessarily jumping up and down in your home and then like doing these heavy, crazy workouts. So this can be a really great way for working from home and things like that for you to be able to do. So we're gonna start off, and these are just my notes, I'm not texting anyone in the middle of the workshop. Uh, we're gonna start off with your upper body. So all that I want for everybody to try are a few jabs in front of you. So you're gonna bring your hands up here from the side, it looks like this, awesome. And then you're just going to punch forward and punch forward. So the only rule is to not straighten out your elbow all the way so that it locks because you don't want to hurt your elbow. So keep a soft elbow, punch forward, punch, and then switch. And we're going to do 20 of these. Ready? Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Great job. Now we're going to go up. So you're going to go up and up. And you might notice that I'm kind of like favoring this side. It's because I have a shoulder injury I'm still rehabbing. So you are going to like straighten it all the way, even if I don't. Ready? 20 of these and go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Great job. Shake it out. Now we're going to alternate your arms. So we're going to go 1, 2, 1, Two. Ready? And we're going to do that 40 times to get your arms warmed up. And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Shake it out. Thumbs up if you're feeling warm in your arms now and your shoulders. Yeah? Sweet! Awesome. Next up, we're going to keep with your arms. And if you want to get up to do this one, you totally can. If you're on a rolly chair, this might not be the best one for a rolly chair, but it's really good to just know in general. So I'm going to get up 
and move my chair like this so that you can see. We're going to do what are called chair push-ups. So if I could do this against the wall for you, I would, just so that you know to put something against the wall. I just feel very confident that it's not gonna slip out from underneath me because I've done this so many times. You can either do this on the top of your chair. So if where your strength ability is to be up here, you can start your push-ups holding on to the back of your chair, and then you would bring your chest down and bring it back up. So the only rule for push-ups to know, really, when you're up high, is that we don't want to be out in a T like this, because that can be really bad on your shoulders. So we actually want your elbows within your shoulders or further. So anywhere lower than your shoulders. So rather than a T, think of an arrowhead. Yeah, exactly. Good. If your strength ability is a little bit higher than just staying on the back of your chair, you're going to come down to where you can sit. So I'm going to stay down here because actually I'm supposed to be doing this for PT. So thank you so much for doing my physical therapy homework with me. <laughs> so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make a, a hand elevated plank. So if anyone's ever searching on Google for this, Search for a hand elevated push up and you'll find it. So my hands are up here. I'm in a plank and I'm going to make sure that my tummy is really tight. So you should like brace for an anime punch. Like really into. And back up. So wherever your strength is today, you're going to give that a try. And let's try two of them if you're able to do these today. You don't have to go all the way down to feel it, trust me. Ready? Go. One. Two. Great job, everybody. How did that feel? Is everyone still alive? I'm going to come close. Yes, you're still alive. Wonderful. Great. Everyone's there. Awesome job. Next up, for another exercise that can be done in your chair, we're going to demonstrate at least the tricep dip. Now, this one is a little bit harder. So we're only gonna probably do two of them as well. But to start, you're gonna be on the edge of your chair. You can do this on a couch even. It's just a little harder because it's smushy. But you can do this in a classroom with those kinds of chairs for teachers who are gonna be rallying socially distant children. Uh, <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do for me is since I have this cushion, I'm just bringing my hand right underneath it because it's not soft, it's sturdier. So I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm going to bring my butt right in front of my seat. So instead of being here, I'm literally right in front and my feet are in a 90 degree angle or my knees are so that my feet and my ankles are right underneath my knees. And what I'm gonna do is keeping my butt and my back really close to this chair I'm gonna lower myself down as low as I can, and then I'm gonna push myself up, keeping my elbows pointing back behind me, lowering myself down to get a really big stretch, and pushing myself up. So, if today your tricep dip is here, and that's as low as you can feel, you can go safely and back up, that's so much better than just sitting there and playing video games and not realizing that you're not doing anything ever. So, if you die in your video game, whatever it is, you can do one tricep dip and pick your controller back up. So let's try that together. I saw a lot of you doing it, that's great. Let's try for two in your own time. Ready, go. Good job, everybody. Great. All right, point to your arms where you felt that one. Yeah, yeah, good. I would just, I always like to ask people like, where did you feel that? You'd be surprised how many people do exercises and they're just like, I don't know, felt it in my body. <laughs> it's like, well, yes. But so that is a tricep dip, which are these mus groups of muscles back here. And a lot of people say that they wanna work on that. So that's a really, like, you can do that anywhere on a park bench, wherever you'd like. Use hand sanitizer after you're in a public park. But 
you know, you can do that wherever you would like. Great job, everybody. Next up, we're going to turn me back around and we're going to do some more just seated things that are really easy to do anywhere. So I have to sit kind of forward just because I'm under 5'5". Five five. So any adult seat turns into this for me if I'm all the way back. <laughs> so I'm at the front of my seat a little bit and I'm gonna bring my arms straight out. Good, like a T, excellent. I'm gonna make little daggers with my hands. Yeah, watch out for your window. <laughs> and then you're gonna make little circles going forward. Start now, tiny little circles. Boop -de -boop -de -boop. Great job, everybody. Really small circles going forward. We're just gonna do this for a little bit and stare at each other awkwardly. How's everyone doing? It's Friday. Good job, everyone. Good, now go back. Same thing. Keep going, really small circles, like you're making a tiny circle with the tip of your fingers. Going back. Are your arms starting to get warm? Shoulders, go forward. Little circles forward. Good job. Little, 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 little. So you can do a little faster now. Round two. Yeah, a little faster going back. Mm. Good job. And relax. Did anyone feel that like in here? Good, yeah. You might even like want to do some of that after that for sure. Now that we've kind of warmed up all of this, we're going to warm up your grip. So what we're going to do next is really good for people who have discomfort in their wrists from being a writer, an artist, a gamer, whatever the case may be. It's really common to have some pain or discomfort in your wrist when you do those activities a lot, or even knitting, anything like that. People tend to get this weird feeling. And we can not strengthen our joints. Like when people say make your knees stronger, make your ankles stronger, make your wrists stronger, that's not actually a thing. What they actually mean is to make the muscles that support that joint stronger. So when thinking about your knee, making all of these muscles and all of these muscles strong enough to support your knee joint. And then of course there are other health needs that are a side of that. So what we're gonna do is help out your forearm and your hand. So I want for everyone to make a really wide hand, like really spread your fingers apart and then make a really tight fist. Spread your fingers apart, make a really tight fist. Do that a few more times. You should start feeling like realizing that there are muscles in your hands. And then maybe when you squeeze, you're like, oh, there are muscles in my forearms. Squeeze, huh, imagine that. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna make it a little crazy and spicy because that's how I like my life. So hands are gonna come out to the sides again. Palms facing down. Open and close really fast. Just like we were doing before, think really wide and then into a fist. Keep going, keep going, and bring your hands right over your head. Remember, this one won't come up as much, my left one, but that's not because you shouldn't, it's just because of my hurt shoulder. Good, open and close. Excellent, back down to your sides. Open and close, do it as fast as you can. Down to your sides now, all the way down. Open and close, open and close, open and close. Out to your sides again, up above your head. Sides, all the way down and relax, shake it out. Good job, everybody. Do you feel your forearms and your hands in a different way than usual now? So that's actually a really cool way to strengthen your forearms. If you wanna know how strong it can make you, pole dancers do that as a warm up. And if you need grip strength in anything, it's holding on to a metal pole for your life. So <laughs> if you wanna work on your grip strength and wanna work on your like wrist stability, it's a really great way of going about it. Um, any questions in terms of the exercises that we just did? Because I don't want anyone to forget that. I'll take general questions at the end, but if there is anything that someone wanted like a modification for, for their body type or anything like that, I would be happy to help you out. So if anything comes to mind, you can write it in the chat or, oh hi Paul, or you can, <laughs> you can uh, give us a shout and we can make sure to get that answered for you. So next up, we're gonna, we just did our upper body for those who just joined us. 
And now we're going to get into our core. And a lot of people don't realize that you can work out your core while you're sitting. But what's unfortunate is that a lot of us don't use our core while we're sitting because we tend to sit kind of like that because we're chilling, especially at home on a comfy couch like this. So when you're sitting like this, you're not using the front part of your core. You are using and stretching your back, which is a part of your core. Thumbs up if you knew that this whole thing was your core. So, some people, no, not a lot of people. So whenever we sort of kind of, <laughs> whenever we hear about core, people kind of think like six pack abs, core. But you should more think about it like a, the core of an apple. So if you are the delicious snack, your core is all of this. It's the entire midsection that keeps you upright. That's right, you are a snack, you heard me. I saw someone touch their heart. That was for you, happy Friday. So <laughs> we are going to work on alleviating some of the stress that a lot of our lower backs take because we're sitting like this or standing like this a lot. And you'd be surprised as to how much stress comes off of someone's lower back when they strengthen the front and side parts of their core. Because your back is trying to do all the work and it's not supposed to. So it gets stressed out. And that's why you get a lot of people with desk jobs who are always complaining about lower back problems and they're like, I don't lift or anything, but you don't have to. Your back is sad. So in order to help you with that, let's do a few posture things before we move on. I'm gonna kind of sit to the side so that you can see this. Uh, thumbs up if you've heard of cat cow and yoga. Sweet. One no. Great. So I get to teach it starting from the bottom. Now, we're going to do cat cow while you're sitting. And again, I sit on the edge of my seat because I am a small human. If you don't need to do that, that's okay. I'm gonna take my hands and place them on the front of my knees. Cool, I see people adjusting. Then what I'm gonna do is lightly brace myself, pull the front of my knees, and pull my chest forward, arching my back. If it's comfortable for you, you can also look up at the ceiling while you do this. Pull your shoulders down away from your ears, open up your chest as wide as you can, and then as you exhale, pull your back to the back of your chair, or wherever you're sitting, and just hold on to the front of your knees and really stretch that back away from you. Chin can come down to your shoulder or your chin. Your chin can come down to your chest if that's comfortable for you. And then breathe in and come all the way through. So this is cow. And then exhale and go to cat. If you think about a scared or angry cat, really arching your back. Let's do that one more time. All the way forward, dip your back like a cow. And then all the way back. Arch your back like a cat. Good, do that one more time on your own without me yapping at you. Excellent. Thumbs up if that felt kinda good at least. Somewhat, somewhere in your body, excellent. What we're going to do now is talk about the two separate parts that people kind of don't think about when we talk about posture. So we're gonna first do the thing that a lot of people do when they try to fix their posture, which is to bring your shoulders up to your ears, bring them back behind you, and then bring them down to the floor. So just doing that, you might feel that your chest really opened up to the front, but you don't want to start arching forward like cow pose. So what you're gonna do is pull your last rib down towards your hips in that position. And you might have just felt your tummy brace when you did that. So let's try that again. Shoulders go up, back, and down. Ribs pulled in, braces your tummy. Does everyone feel that? Excellent. So what you also just did was curve your hips forward. So we're gonna go from being sad puppies sitting all the time to happy puppies. So what I want for everyone to do is think about your tail being underneath you. You're a sad puppy. And then now I want for you to be a happy puppy. Take your tail from underneath you. Good, do that one more time. Underneath you, take it out and be happy. 
Yay! So now let's mix it all together. Shoulders go up, back, and down. Make sure ribs are pulled in and your tailbone is out from underneath you. So if you do not feel like, see, I, I stay away from these words when I work with children, but you all are gonna laugh anyway. You should feel erect. You should feel like you are up at this point. Yeah, the teacher in the room is like, yeah, you could never use that word with kids. <laughs> and I would not. <laughs> Even though it's a technical term, Ugh, kids. All right, so let's do that all together one more time. I want you to relax, like completely let it loose. Good. Then we're gonna go backwards. Do happy puppy. Pull your ribs in. Shoulders up, back, and down. Good. So this is a really supportive position for your posture. And it's not that you even have to hold this all the time because this feels unnatural to me as well. But just knowing when your lower back is hurting, oh, it's because my tail is between my legs. And you can sit yourself up. So I'll demonstrate so that everyone can see. I can go from slouching to sitting up straight without changing my shoulders. So I'm here, sad puppy, happy puppy. I didn't change anything else. So sometimes it's just being able to do that one thing while you're sitting to change your positioning and help out your core. So now we're gonna take this idea of sitting up in a really supportive position, strong position, and we're actually gonna do a few core exercises. So we're gonna start by holding on to the side of your chair or just putting your hands down on your couch, wherever you are. You're gonna come into your stomach like you're bracing for that anime punch. And if you notice, I never say a character because that always starts an argument. So I just say an anime punch. Whoever comes to your mind, whoever is the strongest to you, you think of that person. I'm not, not going there. So hold on to the side of your chair, brace into your stomach. It should feel like you're like, <sighs> and then you're gonna lift up your right knee. Good, lift up your other knee. And then do that 10 more times. One, <laughs> two, keep the tummy tight. Three, let go if you can. Four, but you can hold on. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, one more, 10. Good, so you should have started feeling what are called your hip flexors in here, starting to do some stuff, which are also associated with your core. It's all attached in here. Now, we're gonna get a little bit of your side abs or your obliques involved. So if you can, you're gonna bring your hands to your ears. Doo -doo -doo. Just touching the sides of my ears. And we're gonna do a twist towards that bent leg. So what it looks like from the front will be like this. What it looks like from the side will be like this. So if you notice, I'm not letting go of my posture. I'm still staying really upright. I'm focused on twisting my whole chest and not just bringing my elbow in because that won't do anything. Let's try 10 of these. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And relax, how'd that feel? Are we ready to level up? <laughs> there is, there's some apprehension, but for the most part, it seems like people are down to try it. So now we're going to try both feet. So the difference with this is that you're going to have to lean back a little bit. So as soon as you lean back, you might feel your abs start working. If you're tucking in like we were speaking about, speaking about and bracing right away. What we're also going to do because we're lifting up our feet and we don't have to balance that much is hold on to the sides again. So I'm going to lean back. I'm keeping a really flat back. My stomach is activated by pulling my rib towards my hips. I'm going to lift up both feet boop, and I'm going to bring them back down. If today that looks like this for you, that is so great, and I would really prefer that people do that than just sit all day. So we're gonna try 10 of these, and if each one looks a little bit different, 
that's fine as long as it's safe. You're learning, so it's okay to feel it out and see what works for your body. Ready? Leaning back a little bit, coming into your abdominals really tight, and go. One, two, three, four, five. Should be getting spicy. Six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, one more, ten. A round of applause for yourself. Oh my goodness, yay! Wow, you, you all really, most of you actually did a round. Wow, nerds, they're great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and then, I think next up, what we'll do is go on down to your lower body. So we did arms, we did midsection, and now we're going for legs. So next up, what we're gonna do is a little fast feet. So if you've ever seen, like, athletes warming up, a lot of football teams will do this, basketball teams to be light and quick on their feet. They do this thing. So we're going to do that. I don't have anyone underneath me. If you happen to have a neighbor that you don't want to hate you underneath you, what you can do is lean back in whatever chair you're in so that your feet don't hit the floor as hard. If your weight is forward, it makes more noise than if you do it with your feet back, but you can still move your feet a lot. So that's my tip for doing quick feet in an apartment since I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> so we are going to do this for about 30 seconds. Ready? On your mark, get set, go. Nice and fast, as fast as you can. Nice and light on your toes. Usually I can see people's feet, so this is going to take some imagination on my part. About halfway there. 10 more seconds. And rest. Good job. You can straighten out your legs. You can wiggle around your toes. Do whatever feels good. I don't know, my calves got kind of itchy. I don't know why. I'm just gonna rub them. Yeah, that's great. That's on that recording. I'm not weird. <laughs> All right, so now that we have your feet and your legs warmed up, let's do some calf raises. And we're gonna do seated calf raises. So again, I'm on the edge of my chair because I'm under 5'5". Five five. You can sit however is comfortable for you. I'm gonna show you from the side and then I'll join you from the front. So ankles are gonna be right underneath your knees if that's available to you. And then we're going to come up on your toes and come back down. Good. So for some people, they have enough mobility where they need to actually move their feet a little bit closer to them because they weren't able to really get up on their toes. But it kind of depends on the mobility and flexibility of your ankle joints. So you start here. We're going to move a little closer for me, but you can stay wherever is better for you. So now again, I'm going to come up on my toes and come back down. Good. So from the front. We're gonna try 15 of these. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and rest. Did people feel that at all? It's kind of surprising sometimes what you can do in a chair, but you should have maybe felt it in your ankle, like maybe some snap, crackle, pop if you're 31 or over. <laughs> and then in your calf muscle, so the one down here as well. Great. So this is the part of the programming where we're going to do some things that are standing. So if a standing position is available to you, you can join on in. If not, and you need a modification, you can totally let me know. So we're gonna do a squat. And whenever I say that, people are like, oh, excuse me? I thought this was a chair exercise. But we're gonna use your chair. I like to remind people that if you sit down and stand up, that is a squat. So <laughs> for my squat to this chair, I'm going to bring my feet about hip width apart, 
My toes are pointing out about 30 degrees, and I'm now in a squat stance. What I'm going to do from there is send my butt back for the chair, and then stand back up. I'm going to sit down and stand back up. When you stand, what I want for you to focus on is having your whole foot on the floor, toes spread apart like we did with your hands, gripping onto the floor a little bit to really feel the floor underneath you, and then sit back into your heels, still keeping the whole foot on the floor, and when you stand, I want you to pretend like you can push your heels down to hell. And then I want you to squeeze your butt at the top. So you're gonna sit back, stand, and squeeze. So that's how we just engage a lot more of your body with these chair squats. And now we're gonna try 10 of them in a row. On your mark, get set, go. One, two, good. See if your abs are tight. Three, think about your posture a little bit. Four, Keep your chest up, five, six, seven, almost there, eight, nine, one more, ten, and sit. Robin, there was a request for a uh, modification. Mm -hmm. um, if someone can't do the rapid position change for the squats, what are some suggestions? Uh, what do they mean by rapid position? I, have, I yes. have squats. I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, so I can't go from sitting to standing quickly. So I can't do squats in general. Absolutely. Um, so I was wondering if you had a separate option for somebody that can't do the squats, even to a chair. Yeah. So with what you have are you able to do glute bridges if you know what those are um where you're down on the the ground and your knees are up in the air and then you push up and squeeze and hold yes yes so those are a really great modification for someone who can't do squats on their feet and i can demonstrate it now so that other people can know what it is um it's also really great for anyone who has really sensitive knees and is like, I want to be able to work out my hamstrings, which are the muscles in the back of your thigh, and my glutes or your butt. Um, you can get that same thing out of glute bridges. And what you can do with glute bridges with a chair is actually elevate your back or your feet in order to kind of mix things up if you can, if you're not just wanting to be on the floor. Okay. That does, that, does that answer it? Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, one other thing you can do with your glute bridges, which is really fun, and we'll add in some of your outside of your thigh, which adds in your quads, your quads, which are the front of your thigh, is to take a resistance band and put it around your thighs right above your knees. And what you're going to do is push out on the resistance band the whole time, and it activates your entire thigh life while you're doing the glute bridges. Sounds perfectly horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. So what we were talking about really briefly was the glute bridge. So you can do this just on a floor. You're on your back. Thumbs up. Can you see me still? Sweet. Hands are down by your sides. Feet are about right underneath your knees. You squeeze up. And then what some people don't realize is you don't want to arch your back up for this. You actually want to stop where you can still feel your abdominals being tight like we just spoke about. And then keep a flat back when you're on the floor by squeezing your abs. Squeeze your butt. Squeeze your abs. Squeeze your butt. We just, we're just butts and brains, humans, really. We have big brains and, you know, sizable behinds. And that's why we stand upright. And that's the only reason we're at the top of the food chain, our brains and butts. So be happy for that. That's all we have on the rest of the animal kingdom. So <laughs> with that being said, if you are someone who can do that squat and it kind of feels like you would like a little more adventure, you can try out a one leg chair squat. I can't hear any of you, but I see your faces. And that was all I needed. So for your one leg chair squat, 
If you are able, you're going to bring your foot right underneath your knee or a little bit closer like we spoke about with your calf raises. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with your squat. You're gonna stand, woo, and you're gonna sit, sit. You're gonna stand and sit. If you would like to try that one out, we're gonna do two on each leg. If you're like, that's not my level today, that's totally fine. I would love it if you would do five more chair squats or five glute bridges, whatever works best for you. Is everyone ready? All right, if you're doing one leg, choose your leg. Prepare your weapon. On your mark, get set, go. One, two. Other side if you're changing, and go. One, two. Yeah, great job, everybody. Round of applause, yay. So if you were trying out those one leg uh, squats, you can also do that as a one leg glute bridge, which is another area to torture yourself with if that's what you're into. So rather than being on both legs on your back, you put one leg up when you're doing your glute bridge and you just push one leg up. And both of these are really great because I'm sure as everyone has found in their life, both sides of your body are not as strong as one another all the time. So this is a really great way to make sure that they're both getting what they need. And if you're someone who would like to try to do a pistol squat one day, which I do not because my knee will pop out and roll away, um, but that's the one where people <laughs> go like all the way down here without any support and all the way back up. It's something to work towards. Alrighty, so now that we've done all of that, let's talk a little bit about some stretching that we can do, which is usually a really big favorite when it comes to people who are sitting a lot. So we're gonna start from our head and make our way down. Let's start off with our neck. You're gonna take your arm and place it behind your back like this. Then you're gonna take your hand and place it on the side of your opposite side of your head, so reach across. Right, and then exactly from there, you're gonna pull your head to the side. And I want for you to pull your shoulder away from your ear. Yeah, good. And just hold and breathe. Gently release and switch sides. Other arm reaches behind you as far as you can. Other hand comes to the side of your head as far as you can. And then gently pull to the side pulling your shoulders down away from your face as much as you can. And gently release, good. Now for the back of your neck. We're gonna take your fingers and interlock them. Great, place it on the back of your head. Elbows are out here. Then you're gonna bring your chin to your chest. Good. From there, you're gonna bring your elbows together. Excellent. Now, this is the little bit tricky part. You're gonna push your hands into the back of your head and then push your head back into your hands gently. So there's kind of this counter push. So you're looking down at the floor, pushing hands into head and head into hands. Elbows are still coming close together. Shoulders are still pulling down to the floor. And breathe. And gently release, elbows open up, head comes up, bring your arms down nice and gently. Good. If you want, you can do a really big neck circle. So use the tip of your nose to make the biggest circle that your neck can. So nose can face the floor, one side of the room, ceiling, other side, floor, and then switch. Same thing, using the nose to make as big of a circle as your face can make. Great job, everybody. Now we're gonna interlock those fingers again, and we're gonna reach forward as far as you can while pulling your back into that cat position. So I'm pulling away. My back pulls in one direction, and my hands are pulling forward in the other. And while you're there, you can kind of shift your shoulder one up and one down to get a little bit more of a stretch in the sides of your back reaching away with your back and your hands in opposite directions. 
and gently release. Great job, everybody. How's that feeling for your neck and upper back so far? Cool. Um, let's see what I would like to do next. Let's do some of your lower back. So your left hand is going to come on the outside of your right knee. Right hand is going to reach back behind you. Sit up nice and tall like we were talking about before. Really strong posture. And without using this hand too much, turn and look behind you. Standing up nice and tall to start. Good. And gently come back to the center. Other hand goes on the outside. Other hand comes back behind you. Sit up nice and tall and look. So rather than push and pull, I want for you to look by twisting your shoulders to the back. The rest is just to support you. Great job. Come back to the center. Now we're going to do a couple of things for your hips. So we're going to do a figure four stretch. If you have the mobility, you're going to bring your ankle on top of your knee. If that mobility or that flexibility isn't available to you today, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to bring your ankles and cross them. I'll move back a little bit. You're going to cross at the ankles. If that's too easy, you can always put a really big book underneath this foot to bring it up higher. Or a yoga block if you have them. But all nerds have at least one really big book in their house, so that's why I always say that one. <laughs> but I'm going to stay up here because I need this. So I'm making a four with my legs. From here, I'm going to take my right hand and push my knee away because my right ankle is over my left knee. I'm going to push that away. I'm going to sit up really tall, and then I'm going to bend over my legs. You should feel a stretch like in the back of your hip, kind of in your butt. Yeah, and then you're just going to come down as far as you can. Gently release, and let's try out the other side. My left ankle goes on my right knee. Left hand pushes my left knee away nice and gently. Sit up nice and tall and bend over my legs. And gently come back up. Awesome, we're almost there. One more stretch. We're gonna do a hip stretch. Um, so your hip flexors again. There are a lot of them, but these are the primary ones that get really tight when we're sitting all the time because we sit in chairs like this at 90 degrees, so we never go past or we're not standing like this. So these get really tight in this position because if you notice, at least in the U.S., even our toilets have us like this. That's why they have those squatty potties because we're supposed to be like this. And a lot of us lose the ability to do this even though most of us can do this as babies, innately. If you think about a baby like hanging out, they just chill like this. They play with their toys. If you think about people like washing things, right? Like somewhere on the side of the river washing, like we used to do these things. We used to poop like that. We don't anymore. So our bodies are stuck like this. So what we're gonna do is open up those hips a little bit. You're gonna face the side of a chair if you can. And if you can't do this right now, you can get some notes and use them whenever you'd like. And then I'm gonna take my outside leg and I'm gonna reach it back behind me, nice and straight. So this front leg is at a 90 degree angle. My back leg, like I'm still sitting, but my back leg is stretched out right behind me. Then what I'm gonna do is make sure my hips are in line with each other. So instead of looking at you like this, I'm going to look directly to the side. And if you can't feel this yet, try squeezing your glute or the butt cheek that's behind you. Squeeze it and see if by stretching out your leg that you don't feel it in the front hip here. Yeah. It feels pretty good. It should. And then let's try the other side. So I'm going to just come around. One leg goes out in front in a 90 degree angle. The other leg is really strong and straight back behind me. So this is a really great way to do a supported lunge, where if you can't do this unsupported without a chair, you can do this while you're sitting. Good. Now what I want you to check into is that your back isn't curving forward, that you're not reaching forward. I want you to peel your stomach away from that front leg and see if you can get a deeper stretch in your hip. So activate your abdominals a little bit. 
pull your tummy away from your front thigh. Some people are nodding like, oh yes, I feel something different when I do that. And relax. Good job, shake it all out. Awesome, so we have about just over five minutes left, I think. If people have some questions, I'm happy to start taking them. If we don't have questions, I have extra tidbits to share just about being geeks who sit all the time, but I always like to get to questions. So if anyone has a particular question about being a geek who sits, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, you can definitely unmute yourself too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You all oh, okay, I wasn't sure if I should type or um, yeah. If if we're planning to do this throughout a work day, like what's the ratio of the stretches versus the exercises do you recommend? And then the other question is, um, should we put like blocks or books under our feet like a squatty potty while we're working? Mm. Like, that's a good question. So you don't really need to elevate your feet into a squat to benefit from at least having your feet flat on the floor. So a lot of us tend to sit with like our feet on the wheel parts of our office chairs, like, you know, propped up in like what you realize are awkward positions later. And then your ankles, like your feet kind of fall asleep, whatever I'm going on. But making sure that you're in a position where you can put your feet on the floor can make a huge difference. So for someone like me who's shorter, I need to change the height of most of the chairs and I'll bring it like all the way down to make sure I'm actually solid, solidly touching the floor. In terms of like how to organize this as like a workday programming, I'm usually a really big fan of doing exercises like three sets of 10. That's just like a very general thing to go to for these kinds of movements. So, but anything that's kind of like a set of seven to 12 or 15 could be really great for anybody, whatever works best for them. And then in terms of the stretches, I would say to hold each one for 10 to 20 seconds each. Does that answer your question? Yeah, cool, awesome. Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah, you're um, welcome. Like you mentioned, I have a lot of lower back pain because it's like at least 12 hours in this chair a day. Um, I've been trying to see if like, I try to correct my posture whenever I can, but do you recommend those like cushions that kind of like curve <laughs> take your back forward? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, I think that there are situations where like, Sorry, I have a dog here in my mouth. Uh, I think that there are situations <laughs> where those can be really helpful, but I also think that there are situations where they become a crutch that someone never actually learns how to keep themselves upright. That's what I worry about, yeah. Yeah, so if it's absolutely necessary and someone needs the support, then yes. Uh, another example of that is someone who has flat feet like I do, and I need arch support, but I shouldn't be in my arches all the time because then my feet are just going to be like, I don't have to do this and it's never going to get better. So if maybe you have like one chair that prompts that, but I wouldn't use it all the time unless like a medical professional is like, you need this. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're better off learning the habit over time. Yeah. And being patient with yourself though, because if you've been doing something for 30 years and you expect it to change in a week, that's not, it's not how bodies work. <laughs> Fair, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Great questions. Anyone else? If not, I can share a couple of, we have like three minutes, I can share a couple of nutritional information about people who sit. Yeah, <laughs> I got some thumbs up. Cool. I have some notes. So, um, People sitting has been studied for quite a long time when it comes to workers, but in, you know, when they first started studying this, there was a study called the food requirements of the sedentary worker, because that was not a thing. Like what's a sedentary worker to people who were like farmers and, you know, like working with their hands, that wasn't a thing. So it's been around for a long time, but um, the study has been around for a long time because they were fascinated by the idea of what people might need. Um, being at home right now really changes the game. <laughs> uh, it's not the same as like 
some of the tips that I give when people are in offices is to make your own vending machine. So like to spend the same amount of money that you're spending on the vending machine at the grocery store and leave it in your desk um, instead of just being hungry and bored, you know, like, or tired. And then you go get that snack at work to keep yourself awake or that snack at school to keep, I know when I was in college, I snacked to stay awake in classes. Um, I would just keep eating. So <laughs> sometimes if you can plan ahead in that way, uh, the same thing that you can do at home though, is to put the things that you would like to not have as often out of sight because humans are simple beings and out of sight, out of mind actually does work. And it's been proven time and time again by studies. So if you have a cookie jar, make sure that you can't see the cookies inside. You can leave it on the counter or in your pantry, but studies have actually found that containers that are not see-through, you're less likely to open it and eat it than if you can see the snacks inside. So if you're someone who's getting very snacky, yeah, exactly, because it's just not there. And then you end up going for other food and then you remember that they're there when you're really in the mood for them. And you're like, you know what, this is worth it because it's gonna make me happy. And those are the times when you need your rice cakes. <laughs> um, and then uh, what a lot of people don't do is stay hydrated. So I'm just gonna run through some of these bullet points. Please drink your water. Sometimes you're just thirsty. You're not as angry or tired or hungry as you think. You just, you're dehydrated and you need some water. <laughs> uh, eat more protein. Sometimes all that it takes is filling up on protein because it's very uh, satisfying in our stomachs and can fill us up. So some really common examples of snack protein sources could be hummus, chickpeas. That's a really big, like popular one with people. Uh, hard boiled eggs, edamame or soybeans, like eating them. Uh, yogurt, some of them. Skip the really sugary ones because that's just candy. Uh, but try to aim for ones that are higher in protein. And then jerky. And there are a lot of um, different kinds of jerky now. It's not just beef jerky. They have turkey jerky, which I like saying. Uh, and they also have now meat substitute jerkies that people can look into if they are not animal eaters. And then I think for the most part, that's it. Oh, this is actually really important because this happens to me. If you're someone who forgets to eat, set a timer. A lot of people actually don't have the eating issue when they're at home working. They have the not eating issue when they're at home working because they are in it and it's hard to get out of it. So set a digital timer or a human timer. If there's someone in your life who can tap on your shoulder and say, have you eaten today? That can be very helpful and just tell them to do it nicely because if you haven't eaten, you're probably hangry already and them asking you is probably not gonna make you happier. So <laughs> uh, make sure to eat, drink water, fill up on good proteins and um, hide the things you don't wanna eat all the time from yourself, put them in the counter that's or the cabinet that's too high for you when you're under 5'5 five five and you have to climb on the countertops to get it. I have no experience with that. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> awesome, any last questions? Anything about food or, you know, doing these movements at home? Cool, so my last tidbit. So I do have one question. Oh yes, go ahead, Karen. Uh, So I have IBS. And I'm on a really specific diet, <laughs> which makes it really, really challenging, um, especially uh, like I can't have garlic or onions. Um, I can't have yogurt. I can't like I basically a lot of stuff I can't eat. Are there any like pretty easy go to snacks that you would recommend? Um, like the hard boiled egg really works well for me. Cool. But I think like jerky and stuff like that sometimes has like additives and things that I what can't eat. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty specific. But what I love doing is if you email me, I am more than happy to give you a list of things that would like be probably okay for either you to try or to show your medical provider and be like, hey, are these things chill? Um, but 
Yeah, there are certain like when people have allergies or just anything going on with their GI tract, it can make it so hard to find snacks that you're like, I just want to be able to eat these things, but I can't. Um, yeah, I eat a lot of rice cakes. Um, yeah, those are typically <laughs> safe for people who have IBS, so that's probably a really good go-to. Um, but I definitely have like some things in my notes that I can share with you. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And then my last thing that I want to say is sometimes like the be kind to yourself thing is outdated. Like we all know we're supposed to be nice to ourselves. You're not going to be nice to yourself all the time. Life is really hard right now. You're going to be mean to yourself sometimes and hard on yourself. The word that I've been using, because I like to, if you didn't notice already, Geek Girl Strong likes to do a little bit of everything. So I got to make sure to finish off with some mental health stuff. The word I've been using instead of be kind to myself is to be gentle. So I still have to get things done, but I can be gentle in prompting myself to do them. I can be gentle when I mess up. I, it doesn't mean that I'm not gonna be real with myself. But the image in my head is when you teach a toddler to pet a cat or a dog, right? And they go in and they're excited and then they like slap the crap out of the animal. <laughs> And then you have to, what do people usually say? Adults usually like grab their arm and then assist them and say, be gentle. Because you can still do what you wanna do, but you just need to ease up a little bit. So that is my little bit of mental health stuff to you. If you're having a hard time, just be a little gentle with you and anyone else that you might need to be gentle with. But definitely you, you're more important. <laughs> Awesome, thank you so much, everybody. This was so wonderful. I hope that you all learned something. I'm gonna put the um, newsletter link in the Discord. If you're already on the newsletter and you want the PDF form, just shoot me a message, because you probably know me if you're on the newsletter, honestly. I talk to everybody who's on the newsletter. But if you're not on the Geek Girl Strong newsletter already, you can sign up for that, and then you'll get a PDF of everything that we've done today, together. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.